Hey all, welcome to Valley Forged, another episode here. Um, a lot of people are wondering what laser they should buy, and there's so many YouTube videos on buy this, buy that, it's so much hype. And you know, we've talked a little bit about that. All of these video they all come out about the same time right for a product because they all get sent these things from the company and they they acknowledge this i got sent this and they say a whole bunch of nice things and then they say like one problem or two little problems uh and call it a day and then you end up buying one of these and you're like wait a second that little problem is way bigger than i thought it was or something similar. And I don't blame the companies and I don't blame the YouTubers. You think about this. They're just doing what naturally, what, what did uh, Charlie Munger say? Show me an incentive and I'll give you an outcome. I'll show you an outcome. This is how life works. So you have to realize that a YouTuber can't really make a channel about reviewing lasers unless he gets the lasers. And then a company needs to get people to review their products, so they send out the products. But they don't want bad reviews, so if you give them a bad review, they won't send you another one. So literally, we're dealing with incentives. And it's natural. It's okay. And I'm not going to blame the customer, but I am going to say that more customers, I, I think to be able to change this, more customers need to speak out and say, hey, you're not telling us the truth here or if you know if you're getting ones and you're not liking them and it's pretty easy to start a little youtube channel and say hey you know what this may not be what people said it is uh, i'm just throwing that out there this video isn't really about that it's about what laser you should get now i'm not affiliated with anybody at this point but i probably will be at some point uh, probably not adam stack as i just wrote a video about me not liking their last machine but it doesn't mean that I won't like one in the future. I just didn't feel like it was quite finished. Or it wasn't for me, I should say, at least. Uh, now, I, as a background, I've worked with many lasers, uh, all the way from the 5.5 uh, Jinmitsu, which I have and am currently using, uh, diode laser, and then the 10-watt uh, atom stack. But also, many, 100 let's say 100 to 150 watt lasers, uh, CO2. And that's where I, bu you know, I busted my chops on those types of machines. I was very lucky. You could throw on you know, 40 coasters and get them all done at one time or 100 keychains even. So it's really nice. But then again, you have to have a huge space. And you know, which kind of you going to buy? You can go anywhere from, you know, $2,000 up to fifty, dollars $100,000 for a CO2 laser. Well, within that same range of, say, 50 watts to 150 watts. So it can be pretty confusing. I'm going to break down some, you know, easy thoughts of like what to start looking for if you're getting into lasers. And I suggest you do because they're so amazing. I get up every day and I just think, oh, what am I going to make today? It's just it's Christmas every day. Lasers are so cool. And that's why I'm going to talk about them every day because I totally love them. I've loved everyone I had, at least, you know, to some extent. Now, there are many places like Makerspaces where I started out. And you can go there and you can learn about lasers and you can try them out. And that may be a good way to get into lasers so that you kind of understand what it is and if you even like it. I mean, I took my first class in lasers and then I was hooked. That was it. I didn't even want to touch any other equipment unless it was helping me build something on a laser. And you may have think that that's your interest. And then you may get into it and say, well, you know, I'm not really into this. Uh, maybe you like 3D printing or something like that. I tried that. Couldn't stand it. Too difficult for me. Like, it just... Uh, to be able to think of a product and then get to that end product just seemed too much that I had to do. Whereas with a laser, I just woke up in the morning, I grab a piece of wood, and I'm like, okay, I'm making this today. And, and that would be the end of it. It would be done by the evening. It's so amazing. With a little bit of, you know, computer modeling and whatnot, but not very much. But say there's not a local makerspace or you just want to try it at home. Well, here's what to think of. Where are you going to put it at home? 
Uh, is it going to be inside? Is it going to be in a garage? Uh, if it's going to be inside, you're going to need to get that smoke out of your house. So do you need an enclosure? And if you're going to do it inside, you are going to need an enclosure. That's just a, a period. So I do mine on my porch and then I just inside, I have my computer works out beautifully, but everybody is going to have their own wishes for where they're going to want to put it. So think about that first. And then think about, okay, what am I going to do with it? Well, what you think you're going to do with it may change over time. So you may think, oh, I'm only going to do little things. You may get this really cheap $150 laser and then soon realize, wow, the, the, the part you can uh, actually use is only for very small things. So I personally believe you go with at least, say, a 400 by 400 and you can get those reasonably cheap. I am very happy with the Jinmitsu as far as what you get for, say, a beginner laser. You can get them for about $350. They're pretty well finished. It's a 5.5 watt, which is kind of, you know, low, but it will do your basics. Like, you know, cardboard, cardstock, uh, foam, some small wood, which I'm doing now on it, making coasters, things like that. Keychains, uh, not so great at acrylic but plenty of things that you can get done with it and find out if you really, really enjoy working with a laser. You're not out too much money. I mean, I bought a, like a Silhouette Cameo. I never use it because I find that almost every single thing that I would do on the Cameo, I can do on a laser. I don't want to make t-shirts, and uh, so that's about the only thing. And uh, literally, I'm uh, finding ways that I can do that right here. Just print and cut right on the laser. It's insane. Lasers can do everything. So when the ladies figure out how amazing lasers are, we're going to have a whole new market. And I'm going to talk about that at some point as well. Try and talk these ladies into buying um, lasers because really, it's going to be a whole new world. We were talking about the Jinmitsu, which I like. I personally, after using all of these lasers, I have decided to get this or Tour Master 3 just because it does what I want it to do. They've come out with an expansion already so that you can make it make the bed bigger. Um, they've come out with feet for it. So <clears throat> a lot of the things that maybe were concerns of mine have been remedied. I am a big believer in air assist, and that's something I think you might want to think about. Air assist will definitely keep it less flammable if you're worried about safety, and it just makes a much cleaner burn, much cleaner cuts. It just, I don't even want to use a laser without it. I, I love air assist. So this has a built-in area for you to put the air assist on. You don't have to have weird cables hanging out down here. And it just seems like a very well put together machine by a company who you probably can get a hold of when you need to. So that's something I'm thinking about. This is just me personally. I haven't tried it yet. I will definitely do a review when I get one. And that's a nice middle ground if you want to work at home, but you don't really have the space for <clears throat> a huge CO2 laser. And you don't maybe want to have the expense of a huge CO2 laser until you figure out what you really want to do. So you can get into this probably about $650 to $600, depending on when it's on sale and whatnot. So there's your next step up. Um, now they've come out with, you can't go anywhere, probably even watch this video without getting an X-Tool commercial. I have nothing against X-Tool. Uh, I find it interesting that like on every video of their competitor, they're playing the video. So you can't really even learn about lasers without learning about X-Tool. And somebody's got to pay for that advertising. But uh, it seems like a pretty good machine. That might be a way to go. As far as the 20 watts go, though, here's what I was thinking. It may be a good idea. But once you start getting into the $1,200 range, you may start looking maybe $2,000 or $3,000. You're going to get into a pretty good CO2, which will do a ton more stuff. And uh, so it just depends on what your budget is, obviously. So when I'm talking about this, try and think of things that fit into your own budget. And your budget may grow as you learn to do more things on the laser. Uh, but I think when you're going with CO2, 
60 watts is a pretty good sweet spot uh, to start using the CO2 laser. Now, K40s, are, what's known as a K40 is the 40-watt laser. They're really cool, but at the same time, you're very limited on the space. So now you're going back to the very, very cheap diode lasers of having a very small area to work with. So you can make a couple of coasters at a time or, you know, some 10 keychains or something, but you're really not going to be able to make, say, an art piece if you want to make one because the bed's just not big enough. Now there's modifications and all sorts of things you can do to it, which make it really fun. A lot of forums, a lot of people involved in the community of a K40, and that could be pretty exciting. So, you know, just building a community through lasers, people love this stuff. But if you have room for it and you want to run up to a 60 watt, say like going to Ohm Tech, there would be a very basic company who will make you a laser all the way from 60 watts up to 150 watts, and you can see the prices there. You can go to Ohm Tech, not affiliated with them again. Um, but if I had to buy a laser that was from 60 to 150 watts, that's where I would go. Not going to be a ton of customer service. You're going to have to do a lot of learning on your own, but you will get a very good price for the amount of wattage that you're getting, you're spending. Uh, and I think it, uh, learning about lasers is a lot of the fun of doing lasers. So that's where I would go. But you could, of course, there's Glowforge. There's uh, many of these other laser companies that are going to be on the more expensive side, but then have way better customer service. Something goes wrong and breaks. They're going to take care of it for you. But just realize you're going to pay double to up to 10 times the price for that. So at least double, I would say, but maybe up to 10 times the price to have that full service. But if you're in business and the thing goes down and it's going to cost you money, it may be worth it. But then could you just buy two? So it just depends on what you're doing and uh, what your needs are. If you are looking to get a laser, you have it a garage and you have a little bit of money, I would uh, sincerely look at the home tech line and see if something fits into you. Now I'm in an apartment on the second floor. I've got a outside patio. I literally just don't have room for a 60 watt machine right now. So for me, this seems like the best deal. And that's the kind of neat thing. The way the evolution of lasers has come along, it really makes it to where whatever you need to do, there's a laser that will fit your needs. And uh, I think that's super cool. Um, and it means that a lot more people are getting into lasers. One thing I like about the X-Tool, they are getting more people into lasers. So there's many more things to get inspiration from. But there's still so many things that you can do with it that have never been tried before. And uh, that is really so much fun. So that's all I'm going to say on this. Give me some questions if you have further things. This is basically just an informal thought of me going over what laser maybe you should get for what price point, but there's so much more to it. And I'd be happy to make more videos on the subject and to answer any questions. It's a new channel, so it could be so much more informal and we can just chat about things. All right. See you in the next one.